No, I know. Yeah, no, you're good to go, Tiffany. Other than the youth um, fireside tonight at 6.30 up at the State Center. Okay, cool. Alrighty, well, hi everyone. I'm super excited to be teaching the lesson today. It's been a while, um, but I'm really, I'm really glad to have the opportunity to speak with you all today. So our lesson, that is for discussion is the topic that Elder Rathman spoke about at April 2020 conference. And it's titled The Fulfillment of Prophecy. And I really liked his talk because he spoke so much about prophecies that Joseph Smith foretold during the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Elder Rathband touches on so many different things that have already been fulfilled and are currently being fulfilled. And one thing that really stood out to me, because I know we've spent a lot of time learning about other talks that were also given during conference, um, where they talk specifically about different prophecies and the fulfillment of those prophecies. What I really liked from Elder Rasband was that he relates mm -hmm. personally to something that Joseph Smith prophesied. And so I'm gonna start by reading his quote about his personal experience with the fulfillment of a prophecy that was foretold by Joseph Smith. And then I kind of just want the lesson today to be a discussion where anybody feels free to comment on their own personal experiences of the fulfillment of prophecy, whether it Oh, oh, is your hands dirty? From a prophet, um, from a blessing you have received. And I just thought this would be a really great, great way for people to kind of share their experiences of how their testimonies have grown, experiences personally, Mommy, sure? um, of identifying more with the scriptures or with things a prophet has said. So I'm going to share what Elder Rasband says, and then I'm kind of just going to open it. So if you would like to speak, uh, on okay. mute yourselves. No. And, and go okay. ahead and share, share your stuff. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute everybody and then if you wanna speak, you can unmute yourself. All right, Elder Rasban says, I remember when I received my mission call as a young man. I wanted to serve in Germany like my father, brother, and brother-in-law. Not waiting for anyone to get home, I rushed to the mailbox and opened the call. I read that I had been called to the Eastern States Mission, headquartered in New York City. I was disappointed, so I went inside and opened my scriptures for comfort. I began to read in the Doctrine and Covenants. Behold and lo, I have much people in this place, in the regions round about, and an effectual door shall be opened in the regions round about in this Eastern land. That prophecy given to the prophet Joseph Smith in 1833 was a revelation to me. I knew then I had been called to the exact mission the Lord wanted me to serve in. I taught the restoration and its dramatic beginning when our Father in Heaven spoke to Joseph Smith and said, this is my beloved son, hear him. I really like that he was able to tie it into something that he read when he went and was searching for comfort. Um, so does anybody have any experiences? I mean, I've got some things on the side I'm, I'm preparing to share for some other people as well, but if you would like to share any personal experiences you've had, that would be wonderful. All right, so while you all are pondering on things that you might like to share, um, I'd like to share something that I, I found in this book that I have. It's called It's Better to Look Up, Got It at Desert Book. It's just a collection of stories from different conference talks that have been given. And this is kind of an example of what I'm hoping you might feel inspired to maybe share with others in Relief Society today. This is from Elder Brent H. Nielsen. 
The scripture that this is tied to is Doctrine and Covenants 138, verse 56. Even before they were born, they were prepared to come forth in the due time of the Lord to labor in his vineyard for the salvation of the souls of men. On April 6, 1974, the church sustained a new prophet, President Spencer W. Kimball. That same day, I received my call to serve as a full-time missionary. Oh, I just lost my spot. As a full-time missionary in Finland. I wasn't aware at the time that President Kimball had just delivered a landmark address that week to the general authorities and regional representatives of the church. Later, I learned that in that address, President Kimball prophetically outlined his vision as to how we as a church would accomplish the Savior's charge to teach all nations. In his address, President Kimball invited the members of the church to lengthen their stride and enlarge their vision. While serving in Finland, I learned that my mission president's wife, Sister Leah Mahoney, was a native of Finland. As a young girl, she had grown up in the eastern portion of Finland in a city named Vipuri. I'm sorry if that's the wrong way to say it. As the ravages of war engulfed Finland and other countries during World War II, she and her family left their home and Vipuri became part of the Soviet Union and was renamed Vyborg. In our zone conferences, Sister Mahoney would tell us of those left behind of Vipuri and of her desire that the gospel be taken to them. Following President Kimball's challenge, we unitedly prayed that the hearts of the leaders of that nation would be softened so that the gospel could be taken by our missionaries into the Soviet Union. We would go to the border between Finland and the Soviet Union and see the guard towers and the fences, and we would wonder who those brave young men and women would be and when they would cross that border to take the gospel to the people there. I must admit, at that time, it seemed like an impossible task. Three years ago, our son Eric received a mission call to serve in the Russia St. Petersburg mission. In his first letter home, he wrote something like this. Dear mom and dad, I have been assigned to my first city in Russia. Dad, you may have heard of it before. It's called Vyborg, but it was previously a Finnish city named Vipuri. Tears came to my eyes as I understood that Eric was in the very city we had prayed about 32 years earlier. Eric found a chapel there and a branch of faithful saints. He was living and serving in a place that to me as a young man had seemed impossible to enter. I did not realize those many years ago as we prayed for the borders to open and the missionaries to go in that I was praying for our son. Most important for you of the rising generation, our son Eric did not realize that he and his companions were the answer to prayers and prophecy that had been offered by thousands of faithful saints and the prophets so many years ago. So that's just kind of, I think, really hits on the aspect of Elder Rasband's talk that I like so much, kind of a personal connection to a prophecy given by a prophet and, and things that he was praying for while he was on his mission that he was able to see the fulfillment of. Does anybody have any experience that they would like to share? I'll go ahead and let it be silent for, for a little bit. Uh, Tiffany, I don't know <laughs> if this counts, but um, when I went to get my patriarchal blessing, uh, it was Patriarch Dixon in the Mount Vernon Stake 40 plus years ago. And he asked me, um, if there's anything I wanted to know. And one of the things I wanted to know is if I would be able to do my father's temple work, his, his family, because he grew up in an orphanage. And of course, you know, that was back in the um, 20s, uh, 30s. And um, so lo and behold, 40 years later, um, I did my DNA about a year ago and in December of 19, um, I was able to contact the, the, um, the one that had the most DNA. And it turns out that it is a, my dad's first cousin, who's 90, just turned 94, uh, lives in Pennsylvania. 
And because I was able to, and, and my patriarchal blessing tells me that with uh, diligence and effort, I would be able to find, find them. And so here we are 40 years later, I found him. Turns out that his grandmother, who he knew personally, was a noble. And I looked her up, and her son is Arthur Clark, and that's my dad's dad. And so I guess that's fulfilling prophecy. That is. And that is relevant. That is good enough for, for the lesson. Thank you so much for sharing that. How, if, if I can ask a question to build on that, how did that feel for you to know that 40 years later, the, the things that you were promised or told about in your patriarchal blessing are still being fulfilled and relevant today? Our timing is not the Lord's timing. Um, and the ability to do that wasn't available. It was only through DNA that I was able to do that. And, and because we have that technology now, and because we have the internet now, um, I, could, I could do that. And I'm in contact, I email back and forth with this cousin all the time. And it's interesting because he doesn't believe in God, even though he's, his family thinks he has. He says, all these years I've just pretended and I really don't. And so I've been able to send him the, our temple video on, on temple marriage and why we do temples. And so we've got this kind of a one-sided dialogue going. <laughs> so um, I think it's just, we need to wait upon the Lord and we need to, to be patient. Um, and I've learned that profoundly in just recently that timing is everything. And a lot of times we want stuff right now and, and that may not be the case at all. We need, we need to wait. And I, I was a patient person and now I am more patient um, and waiting for things that I know need to happen. And they'll happen as we, as we um, wait, wait on the Lord. Thank you, Laura, for sharing that so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> I, I have something I'd like to share. Yes. <clears throat> um, this has to do with patriarchal blessings also, um, but it's, it's sort of, um, I did a project several decades ago where I started, when I lived in Salt Lake City, I looked up my ancestors' patriarchal blessings. And one of the things that I, I found within them was um, it talked a lot about uh, there, they, had had they would have numerous posterity and they'd be jewels in their crown and, and, and set things such as that. And so it's actually kind of comforting for me, for me to know that, that me as their posterity, their, that the patriarchal blessing was talking about me and, and like all, all of the grandchildren that were born after that time. So um, it's interesting to see how you can be personally named in a roundabout way and an ancestor's patriarchal blessing. So, and that, that's, uh, so I think that that was, a, I think that me being born and being able to have the church, being born into the church was a fulfillment, was a fulfillment of prophecy. Yeah, you were the fulfillment of the prophecy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love that perspective as well. Thank you. Thank you. I just have a scripture that um, was a, a kind of a prophecy. It's in the Doctrine and Covenants, and it wasn't anything um, profound, like, well, it was profound to me. Let's just hit That's that. What we see. <laughs> but it's just Doctrine and Covenants um, 98, 1 through 3, and I was just, that we were just really having a rough time, like finances and, you know, just life as a growing family. And I came across this and we'd been praying a bunch and feeling like we weren't getting answers and didn't know what to do. And this is what it said. It said, verily I say unto you, my friends, fear not, let your hearts be comforted. Yea, rejoice evermore and in everything give thanks waiting patiently on the Lord for your prayers have entered into the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath and are recorded with his, with this seal and testament, the Lord has sworn and decreed that they shall be granted. 
Therefore, he giveth this promise unto you with an immutable covenant that they shall be fulfilled and all things wherewith you have been afflicted shall work together for your good and to my name's glory, saith the Lord. And so it was just the timing and this obviously, you know, it wasn't originally written for me, but when I found it, um, it was for me. And I just started, um, I started writing in my scriptures. I highlight them with a different color and write the date when it's a personal revelation to me. And I love doing that. Um, I just started that last year, but then I can remember those scriptures even more personally, not just when I randomly read them, but I can find them. And then there's with the date, I know, you know, I know what was going on at that time in my life. So that's just this a way that I've found to better remember those kind of moments of personal revelation. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that um, connection that you had with reading a scripture and how that seemed like a, a prophecy that was just relevant for you at that time and, and that it was also comforting. Sometimes I've been able like I can remember, and, and though they're personal experiences, but I can remember reading something that would have been a prophecy, but I'm almost like being chastised and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then there are other times where it's more comforting than it is putting me back on the path or the mindset that I need to be. I, I'm sure we probably all have some of those moments where it's course correcting prophecy moments and reassuring prophecy moments. Definitely. Um, so something that I thought of, and if you have anything to share, I'm really loving that everybody's sharing things so far. Um, something that I thought of comes from a priest of blessing I received from my father about two and a half years ago. It was right before I was moving up to Washington. I had been living in Utah, and I've said this before, but my life was great in Utah. There was no reason for me to move. I was successful, happy as a single woman and um, was wanting to buy a house, you know, just really proud of myself and where I was. And then had this random prompting one day to move to Washington and, and it didn't make sense. And I kind of thought it almost every literal step of the way because to me it just didn't make sense, but I knew that it was not my idea. And so after maybe a month of getting everything all taken care of and I'm about ready to embark to Washington, I asked my father for a priesthood blessing, just a blessing of comfort as I'm getting ready to go figure out what I'm supposed to do up here. My father gives me a blessing and in the blessing, you know, and for like backstory, my dad's like always been praying that I will get married in the temple, that I'll find a man that'll take me to the temple. Um, if you've seen Mulan and you know when Mulan's father's praying for her in, in the sanctuary with all the ancestors, he goes, please, please help her. One time my dad literally sounded like that when he was praying for me to find somebody to take me to the temple. But so he's giving me a blessing. And, and so when he prays for like stuff like that for me, I would usually just kind of take it with a grain of salt. I'm like, dad, I know you really want it, but I'm happy where I'm at. Um, but in this blessing, he, he said that I would be blessed to find my eternal companion up in Washington and that I would help raise his and our children in a gospel centered home. And I thought that was so interesting and I'm emotional and I'm pregnant, so I'm extra emotional, but I thought that was so interesting. And that really stood out to me because the verbiage for me is always specific when it needs to be. Um, and that had reminded me of, of a personal revelation I had had in the celestial room maybe a year prior, but had forgotten. And long, long story short, I mean, I am a, I did find my companion and I am helping raise his and our children in a gospel centered home. And I didn't imagine that it would happen the way that it did. And it is the Lord's timing. And so sometimes, not sometimes, all the time his timing is, is the way it needs to be. Um, 
And I'm grateful for that personal experience of not just scripture or things that prophets have said, but a blessing from my father that meant so much to me that even years later, I'm able to see the fulfillment of in my life. And I'm grateful for that. Does anybody else have a, an experience they would like to share before we wrap up soon? I can. <laughs> so, Tiffany, that is really a sweet, a sweet thing, story you just shared with us, and that's awesome. And I'm grateful to hear these things. Um, mine does. Thought goes to my patriarchal blessing, and I think I have shared this before. One of the things that my patriarchal blessing says, because um, I had been inactive and had come back and one of the, I requested uh, a patriarchal blessing before I went off to BYU. I just felt like I needed a, a change to be around people um, that were solid in the gospel, and I wanted those new friendships. But nonetheless, I um, wanted a, I wanted a, um, a patriarchal blessing. So in that patriarchal blessing, it does say that I will have many opportunities to serve and that I will be able to do that, and that they will be challenging, and yet I will be able to serve. And um, that has, and I've said this before, I, that has truly been a blessing to me to see how serving in the church is truly what the Lord wants us to do, and to help us grow, because I've had so many growing experiences. So I, I really say that when we take um, except callings, it is from the Lord. But the other thing that um, I really, really have seen in my life where, um, because I had been inactive, um, and it does say that, you know, the Lord was grieved on my behalf, and that he, but with his whisperings, he brought and helped me come back. And I can clearly remember times when I've had those whisperings and um, talking to friends and just saying, you know, I, I think I'm, I think I'm going to go back to church. You know? and, and they kind of thought I was crazy, but nonetheless, those promptings and things came to me. And I know that um, one of the things is I felt um, one of the things I just felt uncomfortable with the people I was hanging out with and, you know, they were like not going anywhere and, and I found myself thinking, why am I hanging out with these people? And, and so sometimes I think that the Spirit can work with us in that way, that He will allow us to be uncomfortable when we need to be, so that we can see that things are not right. We need to get in tune. So anyway, but that was definitely part of, in my patriarchal blessing, that I could see that it came to pass and to those promptings and, and witnesses that, whisperings, that can the guide us. And it truly did happen to me. Awesome. Patty, thank you so much for sharing that. I think that your example kind of really touched on something that I said earlier, that sometimes the, the revelations for us or the little prophecies that we might have can sometimes be uncomfortable and course correcting, and sometimes they can be comforting. And it's good to realize the difference between those things and realize the need to have those things, those different experiences. So I would like to um, close, because we're doing shorter lessons. I would like to close um, by reading a quote from Elder Rasband's talk again, where he mentions Joseph Smith. And um, I'll go ahead and read it and then I'll, I'll add. He says, I close with the prophecy of Joseph Smith, words that I testify are true. No unhallowed hand can stop the work from progressing. Persecutions may rage, mobs may combine, armies may assemble, calumny may defame, but the truth of God will go forth boldly, nobly, and independent, till it has penetrated every continent, visited every clime, swept every country, and sounded in every year, ear, so the purposes of God shall be accomplished and the great Jehovah shall say, the work is done. I so testify that these prophecies of Joseph Smith are being fulfilled. 
Um, I love the prophecies that have been revealed to us by Joseph Smith. I love the prophecies that are in the scriptures. I love the prophecies that have been revealed by prophets past and present. And I know that as a church, we are to look to those prophecies and see globally how they are being fulfilled. But I also know that we are to, to figure out how we personally see that fulfillment in our lives. Ask ourselves, how does this apply to me? What prophecies have I been given in a patriarchal blessing or a priesthood blessing? What am I seeing fulfilled in my Come Follow Me study? Um, this week and this last week, there's been a lot of guided study from Come Follow Me um, in the end of 3rd Nephi and 4th Nephi, where we're talking about a lot of prophecies that we see being fulfilled in our day. Gavin and I have really liked breaking that down and going, how do we see this? Like, yes, we see it in a general sense, but how are he and I witnessing that specifically? And so I think that the topic for the lesson today is just so perfect and fitting, especially in addition to come follow me. So I, I kind of see that as a little bit of revelation as well. So um, sisters, I would like to invite you to maybe pay a little bit more attention to the things that you're reading from prophets and in the scriptures, or if you revisit your patriarchal blessing or you haven't in a while, revisit your patriarchal blessing and go, what was prophesied or revealed to me? What has happened? What hasn't happened? How can, how can I look forward to these things? What would God have me do in preparation for the fulfillment of prophecy in my life? And I leave these things with you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I don't know if anybody would like to volunteer to give a closing prayer and then we'll go ahead and end. It just kind of feels weird to end and say bye without without a closing prayer. So if someone would like to volunteer, that would be great. We'll go ahead and end. I will, Tiffany. Thank you, Marta. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so very grateful that we are able to gather as, as sisters, even during this pandemic and the altered way that we worship at this time. We're grateful for thy hand in all things. We're grateful for revelation and inspiration that guides our church through a prophet on the earth and that guides us personally and in our families. We're grateful for those that sacrifice so much to be able to allow the gospel to be restored to the earth and brought forth through this nation and throughout the world. We're grateful, Heavenly Father, for thy son, his example, the love that he had for us, and still does. We're grateful, Heavenly Father, that we are able to partake of the sacrament again, and that we can gather as a ward family. Help us, Heavenly Father, that we might always be grateful for the blessings that we have, that we might be able to look to ways to minister to each other and to our families within our homes and outside of our homes walls as well help us heavenly father that we will always come to thee in prayer and fasting and in reading our scriptures and in studying the words of the prophets and all those that serve thee that we might be able to prepare ourselves for the days that lie ahead and prepare our families we're grateful again heavenly father for this sabbath day we would ask that we might be reminded to keep it holy and that all that we will do this day will be in remembrance of thee and we say this in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Sisters, I hope you all have a really great Sabbath. And until we see each other again for a nice Relief Society lesson. Thanks, Tiffany.